happy October. In two days, we are going to finally get the long awaited remake of Salem's Lot dropping on HBO Max October 3rd. And so, a couple of days ago, I finally decided to sit down and watch the original Salem's Lot for the very first time. Now, this 1979 miniseries based off some Stephen King work, a book, something I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you, because I haven't read it. Does it live up to the hype of all of these years of not seeing it being hailed as one of the best vampire films ever made, but made for TV? Going into Salem's Lot, as I mentioned, I had read some reviews and there's definitely mixed bags here, but there's a lot of old school fans that believe that Salem's Lot is genuinely terrifying and one of the best vampire films ever made. Now that's a big hype for this film. I didn't go in necessarily expecting to agree with that, but I wanted to give it some love and try to appreciate it. I do not mind some old school 70s horror films. They're a little slow. They have very specific styles sometimes. Sometimes when I'm in the mood for them, that really hits what I'm looking for and I can really enjoy that. And I do believe that Salem's Lot does that very well. The music in here, the way it's shot, the setting, all really ties in with that nice sort of like old school sort of 70s style of filmmaking that was a little bit more like low budget because it's for TV and some stuff's cut out. But again, the music in particular and some of the just the acting and the uh, way it's written or scream, you know, older horror film. And for me, for some reason, it just was really hitting when I was watching it. Obviously, not everything's perfect. But then, of course, some of those films of those decade are going to have a lot of flaws in certain ways. And again, made for TV, going to have flaws. But for some reason, the specific aspects that were like 70s were really hitting for me when I was watching this. It does do a good job at creating a creepy tone. And again, this has a lot to do with the era of the film. It just by nature feels like it's kind of creepy, but it does do that small town mystery thing. And well, it doesn't do as well as some other films. It does automatically make me a little more interest in it. Plus, it's got this creepy house on a hill and this cool little mystery. And of course, the way Stephen King writes, you know, there's a lot of different little things going on in the town. And it's more about the people and the dysfunctions of the families and different things that are going on in the town than it is simply about a vampire story. So a lot of those elements, while I don't feel like fully land or fully developed, they do a good job, did a good job of kind of sucking me into the story and getting me interested in this small town mystery. I do believe there's some good performances in here, especially from James Mason, who plays like the butler or whatever you want to call it, uh, the assistant, the keeper of the vampire. And he's very commanding when he's on screen. He definitely plays a very good like villain who's not afraid of the cops or the townspeople but is very polite and very like proper and i think that he plays a better villain than the actual vampire does and of course he has way more scream time in here i do believe our lead uh david soul also is pretty good in here there are also some pretty cool makeup effects in here and this is a 70s film so i try to give it a little bit of slack especially because it's made for tv and it cuts out a lot when you wish that it would show a little more. That being said, what you do see here does look pretty cool, especially the effect with the eyes. I think the eyes work really, really well in here. It's one of the best aspects of Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. And the main vampire baddie in here also, I do really enjoy the creature design. That is definitely like it's two claim to fame soul things that I think Salem's Lot does really, really well is the eyes in here for the vampires as well as the creature design of the main vampire and definitely can see inspiration from midnight mass just watching this film and how uh, mike flanagan took inspiration not only by story but in creature design as well so i think that that stands out really well and there also is some cool scares in here uh, i had seen the clip of the floating vampire kid outside the window before many times so I think that this would have landed better if I had seen it as a child. This is one of those films that just for sure, if I had seen it years ago, I think it would have hit so much harder and this would have been a lot creepier because there are some pretty creepy moments in here. But unfortunately, I'd seen that clip so many times. So when I finally saw the movie, 
I still think it was actually pretty cool. The effect works really well, but it doesn't have the impact that it probably would have if I had seen it years ago. On to the negatives, things that just really didn't work for me with Salem's Lot. First thing is the fact that this film is like three over three hours long. And I want to clarify, I watched the version that's up on Shutter right now, which I believe, from my understanding, is the full miniseries version just without the commercials because it clocks in at about four hours runtime when it had commercials. From what I understand, this is the uncut version that does have basically the full film because there are two other cuts, which I believe clock, clock in at like hour and 20 and hour and 30 or something. And those are cut to pieces from what I understand. I watched the three hour and some odd minutes version and boy, it spends a lot of time just meandering in the beginning. And again, while I kind of had said it's not necessarily boring, it spends a whole heck of a lot of time trying to get to know all these characters and the things that are going on in town but it doesn't really do a good job of getting into really anything. It kind of just touches a little bit of everything. But then when like the vampire stuff happenings, it just rushes right along. It's like skips ahead and all of a sudden the town's being taken over. And for a movie that spends three hours of its runtime, basically setting up the plot, it could have taken a little more time to really unfold what's going on instead of just like jumping to vampires. So unfortunately, I feel like you spend literally like two hours and 20 minutes or something like that getting to know these people. And then all of a sudden, we're kind of like people are just like hop on vampire real quick. People are leaving the town. Kids are getting sick. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's a vampire infestation already. Oh, OK, we haven't really even like established the rules yet. You guys hadn't like talked about the fact that you're noticing coincidences. You just kind of like jumped a vampire pretty quickly. So unfortunately, I don't think that works as well as it could have. And it loses this basically what could be one of the best aspects of these types of films, which is the sort of outbreak scenario, which for me is one of my favorite parts generally where you kind of get this buildup. And then all of a sudden people are starting to like be like, oh, this is real. We're noticing things. Things are happening. And you get this outbreak and then they try to control it. Then you get like the climax. And it kind of skipped over what is generally the best aspect of these types of films. I also didn't really like the ending. It just it felt like we were leading to a climax where they were making this big plan and they would like go to the house together. And then you get Susan just like shows up and she's like, let me just look at the house. Oh, wait, there's a boy going in. Oh, no, I'll we go inside. Shocker, you're, I'm going to get abducted by vampires. I don't know what was with that. I'm sure it's in the book. Maybe there's, I'm sure there's more backstory to the book. There's probably some stuff that I don't know about, but in the film, it just doesn't work. And then instead of like coming up with a plan, they just kind of like willy nilly go to try to rescue her. And it just kind of feels super rushed. And then they do this thing. The ending just, they like split up and then like she splits up from the kid. And then when they go to rescue her, they split up and the guy's up there just dying on you know, deer antlers and he's just downstairs like picking up his bag. Like, what are you doing? I don't know. None of that really at the end just really doesn't work for me. Then when they, it, it just, when they find the vampire and they shove the stake in his heart, it feels like we should have something more. It feels like we're not at the end yet because we spent so much time leading up to this. We skipped ahead and then all of a sudden we're here at the end and it's like, wait, what? It feels like it shouldn't work and you should have some third act like, or like crazy, battle or some sort of like false ending and then all of a sudden the vampire is alive or something to happen but it doesn't i mean there's a tacked on ending but it doesn't really have anything to do with this final battle he just they just kind of stab the vampire and leave and there's a bunch of other vampires there and they burn the house down which if they're going to burn the house down they could have just done that in the first place because they didn't rescue season anyway so why'd they go and risk their lives to kill the vampire i don't know anyway it just didn't really work for me, and I didn't really like how he kind of just gives up on Susan so quickly. Like, he didn't really even look for her. He just kind of like, bye, Susan. Burns down the house. None of that. All that together. I don't know how it is in the book, but none of that just really works at all. Ultimately, I did actually enjoy Salem's Lot more than I think I anticipated enjoying it after reading some bad reviews for it. But, you know, it doesn't like... I wouldn't say it's one of the best vampire films ever made, but I can see how it is iconic in certain pieces. And I did, can definitely see how if I had seen this as a child, it would probably be up there on my favorite vampires list. I can see there's just so many elements that I think would have worked really, really well if I'd seen them when I was younger. 
And of course, I wish it wasn't a TV movie, uh, but you know, what can you do? That's what it ended up being. And that's how many series were. Of course, they so much different now, but I'm very excited to see the remake. I do want to see the other one with what's his name. The one that has absolutely terrible reviews. I will check that one out of curiosity at some point, but I'm very excited to see the remake that come, that's coming out on October 3rd. There's some mixed reviews for this one as well, but the atmosphere looks really dark and cool and creepy. Let me know what you think about Salem's Lot, the original. And if you're going to check out this one in a couple of days here, thank you for watching and happy October. I'm money scared. I'm a big bad wolf. I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, though. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Hey, now it's funny how they walking with each other.